The northeastern corner of California is a hidden gem. It's remote, beautiful, and the pioneer immigrant trail history lies right at the surface of every town. Join us as we explore this remote and secluded corner of Northern California. Hey guys, Chad and Susan here from the Soccer Mom Off-Road Channel. And we are on another adventure, but of a different sort. We're headed back up to Modoc County where Susan has some work with some clients. But instead of staying in a campsite, we're staying in an old historic Airbnb home in Cedarville, California. And if you've never been to Cedarville, it's such a cute, very, very, very little town with basically kind of one or two main roads going through it. There's not very much there, but there's something super quaint and cute about it. And I, we always like going back there. And this house is right on the main strip. So we're really excited. We've never stayed here before. And we might get an opportunity to play around off-road. So stick around and see what we're up to on this adventure. Modoc County is the northeasternmost county in California. As of 2021, there were only 8,661 residents in the entire county with no major population center. Obviously, with a sparse population and no major cities or towns, it's no surprise that Modoc National Forest comprises 50% of the total square acreage of the county. Highways 299, which we take from Redding when we head up this way, and Highway 395 are the major arteries through the area. So we're gonna start our trip off right. We're almost to Aiden, and gonna stop at the best Frosty in Modoc County, the Oni Frosty in Aiden, for a cheeseburger, fries, and a Frosty, and iced tea. It's a great way to start a really fun two days, a little getaway. Aiden is located just inside the southwest border of Modoc County on Highway 299. It's real small and real quaint, and we love stopping here for a bite at the Oni. On your way to Cedarville, you will pass through Canby, originally founded after General Edward Canby, who lost his life in the line of duty in the area. You will also pass through Alturas, California, the county seat. Unfortunately, Alturas is one of those towns which fell victim to the aesthetic facelift of the 60s and 70s, rendering the main route through town a mismatch of decades. However, the historic Niles Hotel is worth a stop for a coffee, a bite to eat, or even a stay in one of their historic rooms. From Alturas, you will head north on Highway 395 until you take Highway 299 east toward Cedarville, which takes you through the Warner Mountains one of my favorite places to explore. Cedarville, nestled at the eastern foot of the Warner Mountains, is one of those sleepy little western pioneer towns that has managed to persevere into modern times, while at the same time preserving its sense of antiquity without being shabby. In fact, Unlike most towns in the area, the population of Cedarville has actually increased over the past decade. Before we check into our Airbnb, we decided to take a real quick jaunt to see if we can find some snow to play in. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I really didn't anticipate playing in snow like this today. I mean, I was hoping, but I just didn't think it was gonna happen based on our schedule. But here we are, out in snow. It's not very deep at all, but there's a crusty ice layer underneath. And I'm kind of breaking through that and, and the tires are just churning and digging a little more than I want. So we're gonna air down. I'm only taking them down to 15 because we're gonna be back on pavement in, in probably an hour. And I really don't wanna drop down to really low pressure like seven which I would be in in deep snow. So we're gonna try 15 and see how we do.
wishing we could play a little longer, we turn around and head back to Cedarville to check into our Airbnb. The Kressler House was built in 1880 by William T. Kressler, one of the founders of Cedarville. He and his business partner came to the Surprise Valley in 1867 to sell goods to immigrants making their way on up to Oregon or into the interior valleys of California. They founded Cedarville together during this time and began the foundations of the town that still survives today. Today the Kressler House survives as an Airbnb open to the public. All but the innkeeper's room are open to use and leisure by guests of the house. Prices for a stay are extremely reasonable as far as Airbnbs go, and staying at the Kressler gives one access to exploring the Great Basin in Nevada to the east, where stargazers can enjoy the dark sky sanctuary of the Massacre Realm Wilderness, or explore the historic towns of Surprise Valley along County Route 1, or adventure through the Warner Mountains, even enjoy the small ski resort located off Highway 299 near the Cedar Pass of the Warners, or just enjoy the peace and quiet village life of Cedarville from the comfort of the front porch. After checking in, we walked across the street to the country hearth to enjoy some good old comfort food. With full tummies, we turned in for the night. Cedarville is home to mostly ranchers and farmers, but they're no strangers to visitors. Come October, Cedarville becomes a thoroughfare for burners making pilgrimage from the north to Burning Man along the cedarville Gerlach Highway. The Vault, a well-appointed cafe on the corner of Highway 299 and County Route 1 or Main Street, is a must stop if you're visiting or passing through Cedarville. Great coffees, yummy pastries, and other goodies, and a really warm and comfortable space for visiting with friends or taking a quick break on your travels. After enjoying our coffee and coffee cake, it was time to head home. But not before we checked out another frosty place. This one was in Fall River Mills. All right guys, in our quest to find the best frosty, we are here in Fall River Mills at The Frosty. And uh, we're gonna see what kind of fare 
these guys offer. The reviews look really good on Yelp. So we're gonna go in and see what we find. This would be really important to know right here when you come, cash only. All right, guys, well, just a few little thoughts about the Frosty. Uh, a few things you need to know if you're gonna stop in Fall River and get a really good burger and fries. One is that they take cash only, no credit cards. Two, there's a sign outside, and we didn't ask about it. There's a sign that says weekdays only. It is Friday, and so we were able to, to get a burger. Uh, the second thing is their Frosty machine's down, so they do have milkshakes and Sunday's parfaits, but it's, you know, scoop ice cream. So I was a little bit bummed uh, that I didn't get to test their Frosty. They had hot fudge. They had hot fudge. It was good. We had a little Sunday, and it, it, was, uh, it was good. And then it's one gal. It's been in the family for over 30 years. The, um, actually, like... 80s, 86. 86 is when the family uh, purchased it. And it's one gal working in there. So if there were a lot of customers, it might be kind of slow. But she got our food out really fast. So it was a good burger. I would say the Oni Frosty still has my heart in terms of the overall experience, burgers, Frosties, everything. But the Frosty did not disappoint. It was uh, a really good, good burger. So anyway, that's just the end of our adventure for today, unless we have some kind of crazy incident on the way home. So thanks for coming along. And we'll see you guys out again on the trail. And until next time, adventure on. I didn't crash my drone on my first drone outing. Yay!